Hi, we're going to talk about basic titration um, problems. Now, here's how you'll know that you're doing these basic problems that you don't have to use an ice cable, um, is typically that they want an amount. The question will ask for a concentration. In fact, AP has published that they will ask for the concentration of an unknown, unknown analyte. Um, that they want to know what is the concentration of this substance right here. Sometimes they'll want to know grams. Well, that's easy. If we find concentration molarity, you just use volume to find moles and then molar mass to go from moles to grams. So I'm going to do two examples for you. Uh, this one is just looking for straight up concentration. That's going to be the most common question. And you know, I've done this. I wanted to know the concentration of a solution for a Keurig cleaner. Uh, my little coffee maker got plugged and so I bought a Keurig uh, solution. Turned out it was just citric acid. And so I did a quick titration on it, found the concentration. Now I'll make my own for like 20 cents instead of spending $20. Um, so very, very practical in the lab, just finding, well, what is the concentration of this unknown substance? Um, the second one that I'm going to do is um, they're asking for a volume. They want to know a volume. Um, so they're asking for amount opposed to wanting to know pH. pH, you're going to have to do an ice table or henderson Hasselbach. Um, but if they just want to know amount, this is what you're going to do. You're going to find the concentration using titration. Now there are two ways to do this. There's um, using this basic dilution formula. Um, notice I changed the M1, V1 to, um, equals M2, V2 to MA, VA. The A stands for acid equals MB, VB. The B stands for base. Remember that capital M is molarity, moles per liter, and the V is volume. Uh, because these are equal, the volumes cancel. So it's one of the few times when we're dealing with molarity that the volume can be either mils or liters. They just have to be the same from the initial to final conditions, from the acid to the base. Now, why we can set these equal, why we can use this dilution formula lies right here on our titration curve. Mm -hmm. So I have an example here that we're going to have an acetic acid. It's actually example number one. Uh, we're going to start at a low pH, probably three-ish right there. Um, are going to begin to add a strong base to it. So this base is going to react, which is going to slowly increase the pH, and then something beautiful happens. We are going to have the exact amount of moles of the acid react with the exact amount of moles of the base, and that is called the equivalence point. And it's right here, it's the inflection point. It's where the um, direction of uh, this slope changes. Um, so right there in the middle, the equivalence point, notice what I wrote down, is the hydrogen moles equal the hydroxide moles, or the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. Now something that I want to emphasize, I didn't say molarity. It's not that the molarity is equal, it's the moles are equal. The moles equal the moles of the acid and the base. Um, so because they're equal, right there, these are equal. Remember, if I look just at units on this, you've got moles per liter for molarity times volume, which is liters, what is that? Liter cancel, cancels and it gives you moles of acid equal moles of base. That's why we can set those equal to each other. Now, the second way that I'm going to show you how to do this, so I'm going to work this problem two ways for you, um, is using this concept with stoichiometry, that you're just doing dimensional analysis. That's actually how I like to do it. I like to think my way through it instead of, okay, I'm doing a plug and chug, because sometimes with a plug and chug, I get lost in the trees. I lose the forest from the trees. Um, and so I like to think my way through it rather than, oh, I just plug things in. Whatever works for you, you're going to get the same answer. So whatever fits best in your brain, you can do it. Okay, so let's take this problem number one. It says that we have 25 mils of acetic acid. That's that right there. It requires 28.33 mils of a 0.953, excuse me, 0.953 molar um, concentration of sodium hydroxide to reach the equivalence point. Ooh, so whenever you see that term equivalence point, you know you live right here. What's so special about that is the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. Um, so it's asking what is the concentration of the acid. Now just as a review, and you can also look under my playlist for labs, I have several examples of um, titrations that you can look at. Just want to remind you, the setup, because I visualize this, to work my way through it, to make it make sense, I have to see it. Um, so you're gonna have an Erlenmeyer flask, here it is, Erlenmeyer flask, um, and a burette. There's your burette. So the setup would be like this. You'd have a burette clamp 
holding this and um, we are going to deliver the base into this unknown acid right here in the Erlenmeyer flask like that, okay? So just a little reminder. Um, now, a couple of technical terms for you. Here's your burette right here, highly graduated. You can usually read those to the hundredths of a mil. Uh, just a little reminder, you always read in between the tick marks. So this tick mark is at the tenths place, which means you make a guess, significant figure, in between those little tick marks, uh, which puts you at the hundredths place. So highly graduated, that's why I use burettes, is that we can get um, greater accuracy. Um, now, the substance that's in here, and in this case on number one, the only way to do this right here, our NaOH, that's the base, is called the titrant. It's what's doing the titration. We're going to deliver the titrant down here into this unknown solution, um, this unknown concentration of the acid, the vinegar. Um, that's just acetic acid is the same thing as vinegar. Okay, so our Erlenmeyer flask, down here your solution. In um, this case, the analyte is going to be the acetic acid, vinegar. <laughs> um, and this is called the analyte. So the titrant goes into the analyte. Now, I know how much I have of this. We have 25 mils of this, and I wanna know the concentration. Well, thinking again about the units on concentration, remember molarity equals moles per liter. Molarity is moles per liter. Well, I've got the liters, 25 mils, I just need the moles. Well, what do we know about moles? I know at the equivalence point, the moles of that acid oh, equals the moles of the base. So all we have to do is find the moles of this base, and that is going to be the moles inside of here, inside of that acid. So again, I want you to really visualize this. Let's write down numbers on the base and I'll help you visualize it. Um, this says to reach our equivalence point, we have to add 28.33 mils Okay, so I'm going to actually go drop, 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 drop. I'm going to have drop, 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 drop. I'm going to add into this 28.33 mils. So I add 28 mils into this. It also tells us that the concentration of the sodium hydroxide is 0.953 molar. So when I add exactly this much, wow, I hit that equivalence point. And again, with that idea that the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base, I need to find moles. It's right there, baby. Molarity, moles per liter, times volume liters gives me what? Moles. And those moles equal the moles inside of there. Definition of equivalence point. These moles equal the moles right there at this point. Now you might be asking, well, how do you know when you reach that point? It's an indicator. I look under my acid base equilibrium and you can watch the indicator video. An indicator, it changes color. And you go, er, it changed color. Oh, I'm at equivalence point. Beautiful, beautiful point where the moles of this acid equal the moles of the base. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the dimensional analysis. We're thinking our way through this, okay? I want to start with this so that you can really let your brain digest. And you might even have to watch it again. Um, this idea of these moles of the, of the base equal the moles of this acid right here at equivalence point. Okay, so let's find the moles that we delivered to this because I know the moles here equal the moles inside of this acid. Um, so we're going to have 0.953 moles of NaOH divided by one liter, that's just definition of molarity, times my liters. Okay, so I've got 28.33 mils. So just a little reminder, I know most of you can do this in your head, but just in case, let me show you. Remember there are a thousand mils in one liter that gives us 0 0.02833 liters, okay? So let's multiply this. Now I want you to ask yourself, why did I multiply that? Why did I multiply this times that molarity? I bet you got it. It's so the liters cancel out. Liters cancel out and guess what, when I multiply that, we just found the moles. I found the moles of the sodium hydroxide that we added to that acid. Um, so when we do that, let's see, I did the calculation for us already. Um, when we do that, it is point, uh, 0 0.026998 moles of the NaOH. 
that many moles of the NaOH. Um, but I want to find concentration of the acid. Okay, prepare yourself. This is so cool. The moles of the base, what? Equal the moles of the acid at the equivalence point. So this is moles of sodium hydroxide. Guess what? It's also the moles of the acetic acid. Um, now, little disclaimer on this. <clears throat> We're going to have the acetic acid react with the sodium hydroxide. And I'm not writing this as um, net ionic equations. I would actually be that sodium right there would be a spectator ion. Um, it's a neutral ion. It won't react. And you can watch the videos on, on that, on the spectator ions. Um, but for you to see um, how it would be written on a test, it'll say the sodium hydroxide reacts with acetic acid. This is a one-to-one -one molar ratio. I want to be very, very explicit and show you this. Um, I could just say, yeah, these moles of the base equal the moles of the acid, but that's because it's a one-to-one. -one. I could also explicitly show it this way. Um, 0 0.026998 moles of sodium hydroxide. One mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of my acetic acid. And so there's the justification. I just wanted you to see it very, very explicitly. Um, take 0 0.026998 times one divided by one, and what is it? 0 0.026998. They're the same. They're the same because we are at equivalence point. Um, so just wanted to point that out. Now, in this problem, it's not a one-to-one. -one. So you'll see that conversion using the dimensional analysis. All right, let's go ahead and finish this off. I'm going to write this down. This actually equals, okay, it equals, equals the 0.269898, sorry, moles of the acetic acid. They are the same. And again, why? Because they're right there at equivalence point. Okay, so if I have moles of the acid, all I have to do is divide by the volume and we find molarity. 0 0.026998 moles of my acetic acid divided by, what was the volume again? 25 mils. That's the same thing as 0 0.025 liters. I just divided that by a thousand. And we are going to get 1.08 molar for the acetic acid. And that's the answer that we wanted. So I know I did a lot of talking explaining this to you. Once you get this in your head of the moles that you um, add from the titrant to the analyte equal each other at the equivalence point, this will go really fast. It'll go really fast for you. Now, I do want to do the same problem with that dilution formula, that MA times VA equals MB times VB. <clears throat> so in this case, I'm just going to label everything and then we'll do a plug and chug. Um, again, that disclaimer that I mentioned before, you have to be really careful. In order to just plug everything in, you have to make sure that it's a one-to-one -one molar ratio, that one mole of the base is reacting with one mole of the acid. And um, most often times it is, um, just always double check it. So one mole of sodium hydroxide reacts with one mole of acetic acid. So I can go ahead and label. Molarity of the acid, that's what we're looking for. What's the molarity of the acetic acid? The volume of the acetic acid, check it out. I'm going to leave this in mils because when I use this formula, as long as I have the same unit for volume on the acid and the base side, it doesn't matter if it's mils or liters. Um, it's because it cancels out. Uh, and then we have the molarity of the base is the 0.953 molar. The volume of the base was the 28.33 mils. Okay, so we've got our formula, MAVA equals MBVB. Let's go ahead and solve for our MA. I'll divide both sides by the VA. And MA equals MB times VB divided by VA. So at this point, really easy. Just plug in our numbers and do the calculation. Uh, so MA will be molarity of the base, 0.953. Always be careful, write down those units, we'll track them. 
and they also show us if we do it correctly times the dB which is 28.33 mils divided by the volume of the acid which is 25 mils. Now check out those units. Mills cancels. So if we take 0 0.953 times 28.33 divided by 25 or excuse me 25 mils, I bet you already know what the answer is. 1.08 molar. Same answer. Same answer. Um, so you can use this dilution formula because the moles of the acid equal moles of the base. That's all that's saying right there. Or you can use dimensional analysis.